Um, thank you for coming to the LEAP event. This is our second of three that we're offering this semester to our students, aspiring student leaders and those that are advanced student leaders here on campus. Um, so we're excited today to feature Raymond Adams. Um, so from being the first person in his family to graduate college to becoming a three-time All-American in football, national champion in track and field, and a Hall of Fame inductee, he lived out his dream of playing the, in the NFL for the New York Jets. Of all his record-setting accomplishments, he's known for one thing for sure, devoting his energy to help every individual realize they have their own source of power, to achieve anything they desire in life by transforming their mindset and ultimately reaching Buffalo status. Now as a cool father, author, founder, and CEO of two innovative technology companies, Raymond's goal is to inspire everyone to redefine their story by facing their fears and become the champions they were born to be. Let's welcome Raymond Adams. Well, that was a pretty, uh, pretty quick introduction. I didn't write that introduction, but uh, it sounded really, really good. Hey, uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me here at uh, East of Connecticut here. Uh, I was telling some friends that I was coming up this way, and most of them was like, okay, so where is that situated on the map? Uh, and I, I myself actually didn't know. Not that it's a small place, it's just the majority of us who are living either in the South or come from the South or live in the Midwest only live, you know, uh, we keep our mindset, you know, in the Midwest. Um, but just a little bit about me uh, real quick here, guys. Uh, when I was on the way here, again, I had a very, very warm welcoming. A welcoming. Uh, and when I got to Chicago and I got on a Chicago flight into uh, Hartford, uh, or this airport that's north of Harf uh, Hartford there, uh, you know, uh, for whatever reason, the lady started talking to me. And she was just like, oh my god, you, you're heading to Willimantic? Uh, she was like, oh, that's the place that we call Romantic Willimantic, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> like, what does that mean? And she was just like, well, you know, you're going to be out in the woods, so you need to understand that it's not like a big, big city, it's just, you know, it's in a college town. And so uh, what I ended up doing is like, you know what, you, they had a whole bunch of ideas of like what I should do, right? So I wrote all of them down, and I had this really warm welcome, and one of the ladies thought I was a real, you know, I don't know if you guys know that Nebraska is known for the corn huskers, right? And she thought that I was a real corn husker, not the football player like a detasseler. So she was just like, that, ain't that why you guys call them corn huskers? I'm like, well, like, like if anything, I wouldn't be a detasseler. I probably would be an athlete, not a detasseler. So that was pretty interesting. And then a uh, lady was like, you know what? Here's a really cool stuff that you got to do around uh, in that area, or at least in the, in the east, is that you need to get a, a lobster roll. And I'm like, a lobster roll is that sushi? And they looked at me like, dude, no. It's like a delicacy here, and so it's not like sushi. I thought it was sushi, and, and if you can have lobster and sushi, I guess, I don't know. But, uh, and then, uh, uh, driving in here last night, I drove through some interesting cities. I don't know, I think I ended up taking the wrong exit to Coventry? It, Coventry, that's how you say it? Well, I went down Coventry, and I'm thinking I'm gonna find a hotel, maybe a gas station or whatnot. That didn't happen. I seen a whole bunch of spooky houses on the way down through here. And it was really dark driving off in here. And I'm saying to myself, man, why don't they turn the city lights on down here, you know? And then I get to the Hotel of the Best Western, and they got a doggone scarecrow in there waiting on me. So I was like, good God almighty, where did I get myself into? So no, for real, guys, I want to make sure you understand a couple things is I'm from the South. And I feel like my, my journey has been an interesting journey. Uh, and, and I don't go into detail, detail. I just tell you enough of the journey that I actually went on to actually become the person I am today. But I'm a Southern gentleman with a little bit of city, a city style. And I don't apologize for the way I speak, my Southern dialect, or anything. So if you don't understand what I say, I just need you to just shake your head and smile and be like, good job, guy, good job. All right? So again, we're going to get started here in a second. And so what we're going to most likely talk about, guys, uh, or talk about mostly is uh, the four characteristics of championship teams versus mediocre teams. Um, if you uh, heard the introduction, I played in the NFL, had a chance to play professional ball a total of five years, uh, and, and it was with the New York Jets, so that's pretty close to, to you guys here. Uh, how leaders are in unintentionally programmed from birth, uh, as well as why self-discovery is the key to authentic leadership and the number one undeniable truth and purpose of leaders. And then after that, I'm gonna leave a little time for Q&A. So <clears throat> before we start that though, I need one brave soul. One brave soul who actually has a Venmo account. Somebody raise your hand. Can somebody raise your hand? I'm gonna pick somebody. Come on up, guy. Come on up, come on up. You got a Venmo account? Yeah. All right, cool. So here's the deal. This is, a, come stand right here. Come stand front and center. Now, now we got to participate. Everybody in here has to participate, all right? We got this. You ready? You're probably shaking. You're probably nervous. It's okay. Calm down. I'm not going to have you. Well, I can't say I won't have you do that. Um, all right, so here's what's going to happen. 
I'm going to actually do something. I'm pretty sure that everybody in here, because it's all about understanding that we all have something in common. No matter where our backgrounds are, no matter what we've done in our life, there's always things that trigger us and we can actually pretty much just join in. So we're all connected in some way, form, or fashion. I'm a big believer in the laws of the universe. So what's going to happen is I'm going to, uh, I was going to give you a mic, but it's, 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 it's tight enough in here. But here's what has, has to happen. Here's what it's going to do. I'm going to spur you to do a particular thing. And believe me, when I do it, everybody knows what it is. All right? So you're going to have to stand up here in a second. What you need to be able to do is sing the words to the song. <laughs> you ready for this? You ready? All right, now, what he's going to get is this. He's already going to get a, a gift, all right? But if he can nail the words to the song, he will get $100. We guys got it? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you ready? All right, now, everybody ready? Stand up, stand up, stand up. I need everybody everybody got to stand up. 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 Now, watch this. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Guys, get your hands ready to go. Get it, get it, get it, get it loosened up, get it loosened up. Now here's the deal, you about ready? <laughs> if he nailed the words of the song, he will get a hundred bucks. You guys ready? So, so when you hear it, believe me, it's gonna strike you. you don't, you're gonna trigger, you know, you're gonna know exactly the song, right? You guys ready? Repeat after me. Come on. You know the words? Go ahead, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Come on. Sing it. I need it louder. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know the real words? <laughs> yeah. You know, what is it? <laughs> good job. Hey, good job. No worries. Hey, with that, man, you don't get 100 bucks, but I give you 50. All right? You good with that? Hey, but here's the thing. A brave man once told me that all it takes sometimes is action in life. Right? So, hey, don't let me leave here without giving you that 50 bucks. All right? But you got to have Venmo. I didn't carry much money down here with all the scarecrows and everything in the dark streets down here in Connecticut. Um, so, appreciate you guys for doing that. Hey, so here's the thing. What you have to understand is we all go through different aspects and areas of our life that has taught and has perfected us or given us uh, the ability to perfect where we're going to be in the future. There is no situation in life that you're not going to be able to redeem. And so I got to tell you a little bit of my story here. And before I do that, I have to tell you that the main thing about today is I want to give you a real good understanding that you have to actually erase every idea of what you believe leadership is. Right here and right now, just wipe it clean. Because people can tell you that, that you need a, a 10 principles to be the most highly effective leader. You need another 1,000 secrets to become the most influential. And you need another uh, 12 books to read to even just get the gist of it. And let me tell you guys, after running two technology companies, as well as having kids of my own and running an elite track club in Lincoln, Nebraska, I found that it has nothing to do with principles, secrets, or any kind of other manuals. Every single thing about leadership has to do with you. Every aspect of leadership has to has, uh, starts with you, okay? So, a little bit about my story. I came from high school, a high school in Texarkana, Arkansas. And in my high school, we were a pretty good team. And a lot of my buddies, when I went to college, didn't have this, this luxury or this opportunity, this blessing, to actually have teams that were really, really amazing. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, if we played on Friday night, and a team had 25 yards on us, talking about football here, 25 yards on us, that was not a good night for our football team. If we didn't score 50 plus points on you, Jesus Christ himself must have been playing middle linebacker on the other side of the ball. That's literally how great we were as a team. I actually grew up in a city and a town that actually shared the likes of Rod Smith, which is a Denver Bronco, Eric Warfield, who's a Kansas City Chief, 
as well as LaMichael James, who played at Oregon, went on to San Francisco. And right now, currently, a lot of Olympians who are actually still on the Olympic team from Texarkana, Arkansas, which is where I'm originally from. Now, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. It must be something in the water, but also you have to understand that something down there is happening to where there's a lot of not just great athletes, but somebody who's grooming those athletes, not from a physical standpoint, but from a mental standpoint. And so I want you to understand that let's remove all the principles, and I want to have you understand that every single, every single stop I went to from high school to college to the pros and the great teams that I actually were on, there were four characteristics that literally was consistent across every single team, and it did not falter. I can guarantee you this. And so it just so luckily happens to be uh, spelled out Lee. So again, uh, I want to make sure you understand is that I was the first person for my whole entire family to graduate college after living in a trailer house, no food, no light, no electricity at times, becoming one of the best athletes in the state of Arkansas, one of the best hurlers in the country, going off and getting a chance to actually be the first person my family to graduate college, and then getting a chance to play in the NFL, play professional ball a total of five years. Now, if you looked at where we live, you would think, well, these are dire situations. This person or these circumstances uh, uh, are not ideal. And again, like I said, I had hunger pains pretty much most of my young adult, uh, my, young, my young life. Uh, but there was something that was operating on the inside of me that was different from most people who would have folded in, those situ in that situation. I want to let you know one thing, it's, it's all about leadership is not about ability. It's about mentality. So now that we've understood that wiping your, sweat, your slate clean, you don't have to have a certain height, have a certain weight, you don't have to look a particular way. Your hair don't have to be golden locks and brown, and you don't have to be six foot four and, and, and standing, you know, uh, you know, in the front of a, mag uh, a, a camera in the magazines and everything, start to, you know, book you. You don't need all that. What you need to understand is that leadership starts here. It's mentality. Okay. So, with that being the case, every single team that was championship teams versus a mediocre team. They had these four characteristics. And, it and again, it just so happily it, it spells LEAP. I had no idea when I was speaking to the ladies or whatnot. They were like, we got a program called LEAP. And I'm like, this is perfect. So it's just awesome that it spelled out LEAP. First things first, the first part of the L, excuse me, the, uh, the, the, the word is leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, leadership is everything. There is no football team, track team, Girl Scout group, no organization that's successful that's not ran by a leader. Every single one of them that's successful is ran by a leader. Not athlete, not just individual people who are just going to work, it is ran by a leader. There is something happening within that leader. That leader knows how to inspire the group. Now, before we go on, you have to understand that so many people uh, use the words leader, leadership, and everything else that has to do with leaders, all in one. And I want to make sure that we, uh, we put this thing into perspective, okay? So leadership, I want you to understand a couple of things. Most people see leadership to the, on the left side here as a top-down approach. One person lead, maybe two, and then all of a sudden information goes down. Well, the truth is, that's just a dissemination of information. That's, that's dissemination of information. That's not leadership. Real leadership is dynamic. There are more leaders on a team that's a championship style team, there's a lot more of them. And they don't actually look at themselves from a top down approach, it's actually a circle. And when one person is speaking and talking, all listen to them. Whether this person is a first year person, whether that person is a fifth year person, whether that person is a 10 year person, whether they are a Hall of Famer, or whether they're a rookie. This is exactly the characteristic that you want to have when you're actually running a team and actually how you actually operate. So again, dissemination, dissemination of information versus dynamic leadership. The one on the right is what you want. You have to be operating from that sort of mindset. The other thing about the left side is that there is one person in charge. That's not a leadership group, that's not dynamic. And if you're talking about a team and you're going to get some things, some things done organizationally, sports-wise, 
or even in your family or in your household, amongst your friends. This doesn't work. That's just information. You want a dynamic approach, all right? The more leaders that you have on a team, most likely you're going to increase your chances of actually having a lot of success. So let's break this thing down. So up at the top here, I want to actually make sure we put it in perspective. Leaders, leaders create an inspiring vision of the future and then motivates the team to engage with that vision. That vision meaning your purpose, okay? Also known as your why, okay? You need to understand that that's what a leader is. He is an individual. Now, leadership is the actions and or the skills taken to carry out that vision, right? Your vision, again, being your purpose. It grooms you to be, become the better leader that you want to be, okay? Now, leadership development is a continued thing, all right? It's intentional growth. It's a continued journey to equip yourself with the better leadership skills that you need to continue to lead that group. Because let's just be honest, a lot of people think, oh, well, leaders are born. No. Let's just be honest. <laughs> leaders are actually developed. You were born with all the faculties and all the attributes to be a leader, but you must develop those things. That's, there's no way around that. That's simple math. You, the leader, practice leadership, and you have to continue it until you die. Period. So now we have it in perspective. Again, leaders versus leadership and leadership development, all right? One is the individual. One is the skill sets we actually use to continue the things that we actually need to do to make sure we lead the group. But we're going to actually also continue to develop ourselves to actually have better leadership skills so that we can actually lead ourselves. Now, the other thing about leadership is this. There is no leader who's perfect. Show me a perfect leader and I'll show you a fraud. Too many people think that, hey, if I'm a leader, then I cannot make a mistake. And that's, that's impossible. There's no person in this world that's a leader who would tell, they would, if, if they're worth their weight in gold, they're not gonna tell you that they're perfect. They're gonna actually be the type of people who are authentic and say, hey, look, I had no idea about this particular aspect of business, life, relationships, love, all these things, because when you master one thing, you master all. So if you're a leader at, at your company, or in the classroom, or on your team, master that, and you'll master that thing in every other aspect of your life, okay? So understand that. Now, the thing about a leader is, if you can't lead yourself, why would anybody else lead you? So leadership starts with you. And leaders have a sense of vision. And, and, and when I say they have a sense of vision, that means that they, they have a purpose, right? And that purpose, we'll talk about this thing later, but you gotta understand the thing about the leader is that when you don't have a vision or a purpose, where are you going? Why even travel? Why even give an effort? There, these things are math. One plus one equals this. And when you have an understanding of the base level of what leadership is, then you can actually operate correctly and then you can build from there. So also the thing about a leader is that they are not focused on themselves. To focus on the good of the group, okay? So I want to make sure you understand that. What leads, uh, excuse me, so that leads us to the next thing, which is every leader is governed by his vision, and vision and purpose requires an effort. There is no such thing as getting something for nothing, okay? There is no such thing as that. You need to understand is that when I look at you as a person, why would I actually want to follow you as a leader if you don't give the effort that I feel is required to have success? So now here's the thing about this, and I'll, and I'll make sure that we say this several times, or I'll say this several times to you. So far, leadership and effort, does that require talent? Mm -mm. Does it require you to be tall, big, strong, cheerleader, football player, Girl Scout? It doesn't. It doesn't even have, it require you to have a, a particular salary. It doesn't require anything other than you making your best effort. And that's essentially it. No effort, no action. 
tells people that you're not committed. Be committed to giving your best effort in everything you do. There is a story I used to hear from my pops. And my pops said that there was this, this young boy who had a lawnmower. And he was on the way up to the store because he was, just had mowed the lawn or whatnot. And he was, he was, he was wheeling his uh, lawnmower right on by this, uh, this man's house. And he saw the grass tall. He looked up there and he seen the guy had a bike. Seen the man outside. And so he wheeled his, motor, uh, his, uh, his lawnmower up there and said, hey, um, you know, it seemed like your grass need a little bit of cutting there. He said, if you let me borrow that bike, I'll let you borrow my lawnmower. And, you know, you, why you can cut your grass. So even trade. The man looked at him and said, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. The boy went on, grabbed a bike, went to the store. By the time he got back, the man kept yanking on it. He said, man, you know, I hadn't had, to get, had a chance to get this thing uh, uh, crank, cranked up yet. And the boy said, oh, you got to curse it. And, and the old man said, oh, no, man, you know. Hey, I'm a, I'm a deacon, you know, I've been, I've been a pastor for years, and you know, that old cursing thing, that done left me. And the boy looked at him and said, well, hell, keep yanking on that, I bet it come back. <laughs> so the idea of actually understanding that you need to understand that you might have to get out of character sometimes and, and make your best effort to get things sold and get things done. It's much like the young man who actually was selling some puppies. He had a box of puppies, that same young man said, Hey, you know, I got a box of puppies and whatnot, they call it five dollars. Man comes to him and says, oh, you got a box of puppies for five dollars? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, cool. Well, hey, I don't have no money. I'm going to run up to the bank, grab five dollars, and I'll be right back. So he runs up there, comes back, and the boy said, he said, oh, so yeah, so you said it was five dollars? He said, oh, no, they ten dollars. And he said, well, you just told me they were five dollars a minute ago. He said, well, oh, they don't open up their eyes. So the, the idea of being able to make sure you make as many effort as you, po as you possibly can to, to have success it, it, it requires you to sometimes come out of your comfort zone. Effort is all about the things you need to do to make sure that you get to that next level. Effort, it does not have a particular type of formula. You just have to make the best effort you possibly can, okay? And the truth about effort is that it's your responsibility. Nobody else can do that for you. Responsibility is on you, okay? So no one will buy in unless you're committed. The next thing is this, is attitude. Now. I want to spend a, a pretty good time on attitude because this thing makes the biggest difference amongst every single thing we're going to be talking about. And the way that I actually want to explain to you the attitude I heard from this, uh, this pastor uh, who's from the Bahamas, and he talked about the king being, excuse me, the lion being the king of the jungle. Uh, and he also talked about your attitude is a product of your belief. And like I said earlier, I want you to understand that the reason why we got to wipe our slate clean is because underlying, the underlying uh, uh, um, thing that's driving you is, is your programming, is your beliefs about yourself. So what he talked about is that the king is, excuse me, the lion is the king of the jungle for one word, and it's attitude. He's not the small, he's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, he's not the strongest. So what makes the jungle respect the small cat? If you look at the elephant, the elephant is 50 times larger, 10 times stronger. One stomp of his feet could destroy the lion. But when the lion sees the elephant, he doesn't think about height and weight. He sees lunch. So if he's thinking lunch, He's thinking eating. And guess what? He acts the way he thinks. He doesn't care about how tall the, the, uh, or how big uh, the, the elephant is. He's not heavier than the hippo, taller than the giraffe. He's not even as smart as a snake or the hyena, hyena. But he's literally the king of the jungle. And it's a one word, it's attitude. Now here's what's the most interesting thing is that when the elephant sees the lion, the elephant begins to act like a sheep. He is ridden, riddled by fear. Now, here it is, he's bigger, stronger, more powerful, smarter, but when he sees the lion, he cowers. Because in his mind, he sees the lion and he says, eater. So then he had, he's stricken with fear. So that means that 
the elephant, no matter how big and how strong he is, he's a victim of the way he thinks. Now, how often have you not pursued a dream or could have raised your hand and spoke up or had a great idea, could have executed on something, or maybe even led a group to a better place or destination, yet you didn't? Ask yourself, why is that? You have to understand is that everything, every single thing about leadership has to do with the mindset. Where is your mindset? If you think like a lion, you need to understand is that he's the king of the jungle for one word, and that's attitude. He acts the way he thinks. So the truth about this is, is it's not your ability, it's your mentality. I've said that several times now. It's not about your ability, it's your mentality. Wipe that slate clean that you have to be some sort of particular type of person or a different group. That's not the case, because guess what? Your whole entire family and the friends you've been around in your environment has taught you that there is this certain group of people who are just leaders who were born this way, and that's not true. You might actually have things that make people actually attracted to you, meaning that you might be an open person, you might actually speak more, you might wear a particular type of clothes, uh, you might play a particular type of sport, and some people can actually conform and gravitate toward that. But that doesn't mean that you're actually a leader. And you don't need those things to actually be a leader. What you need to understand is that it's everything about mentality, okay? And so these four characteristics are the big part of that. These five things that, here go the five things that control our su success and failure. And the biggest one is our programming. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, our churches, our friends, our school system. Where did this come from? You gotta think about that. It changes, our, it, it, uh, it, it develops our beliefs, and our beliefs affects our attitude. Remember that your attitude is a product of your belief, which is gonna control the way you feel about it, thus manifesting the behavior. The lion versus the elephant. Both of them are very powerful animals, but the elephant is weaker. He's weakened when you see the lion because he thinks he's lunch. So, one of the main things you need to understand is this, is that one of the greatest things I've ever heard from that, that one, uh, one guy, again, uh, named Miles Monroe, he said that um, if, you, if you think about uh, the idea that an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. So if you are a lion, it doesn't matter who you have on your team. You most likely are gonna win. If you have the lion mentality, you most likely are gonna win. But if you're a sheep and your programming is negative, and you got all these limiting beliefs and you have no confidence, low self-esteem, which again, comes from your programming, mother, father, grandma, grandpa, the things you believe about yourself, they're going to manifest into the behavior. You need to understand that one key thing, and this is where you're gonna start seeing the switch of authentic leadership, because here's the deal. You don't have to be someone like a, what's the guy, the, 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 uh, the head coach at uh, uh, Connecticut here, like Gino? Everybody here should know him, right? Gino, he's a well-known guy. If you try to model yourself after him, Nick Saban, Phil Jackson, or one of these other well-known coaches, you're running into a dead end because you're in comparison. That means that you're in their lane, all right? Don't compare yourself to somebody else because when you compare yourself to somebody else, you switch into a lane and you can never ever actually pass that person. Get into your own lane, it's the only time. So see this person not as a comparison, but of inspiration. Be inspired by that person, but stay in your own lane and never compare yourself. Because it doesn't matter about where you come from, where you look, and how you grew up. The one thing that I'll make sure you guys understand this is, this is the truth, and if you can remember this, remember this. Winners come from all walks of life, as do losers. It's not what, where you grew up, it's what grew up inside of you. That's the basis of leadership, okay? That's where it's at, okay? So, which leads you into the next characteristic. They were always persistent. 
every single team that I've been on, when we were championships, when we were, when we were in the championship, or we won it, or we actually was either one or two points from actually not winning the thing, literally, I, I wear, I have four of these sparkly things. And I can guarantee you that if I went back and I, which I did, marked down every single thing, did research, actually interviewed my, 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 my teammates from all those years, and I asked them, what do you think was the difference between us in 1997 versus us in 1999? Same with my college teammates. And they told me, man, hey, it didn't matter what it was that we actually were faced with, we were pretty persistent about accepting the challenge and getting after it. Persistency is every single thing. It's everything, it's omnipotent. And if you heard the quote from Calvin Coolidge that said that uh, there is no substitute for persistence. It's omnipotent. You have to understand that the big part of having anything come to fruition is that you have to be persistent because there are going to be a lot of obstacles. So here's the truth. Without persistence, you will have no drive to finish. This is why you need a purpose, right? So what am I going to be persistent on if there is really no purpose? So it goes back to leadership and having a vision. A le a vi a leader leaders have vision, and that vision is pretty much a purpose in picture, okay? So passion plus persistence equals purpose. But if you reverse it, you have to have a purpose, right? Before you could ever be persistent. And if you don't have passion, why would you be persistent about anything? If you are going to be persistent, passion is required. If you're going to have passion, you have to have passion about something. And that's a vision. And majority of the time, that vision, you might be involved in it, but the vision is really for the good of the group. That's really where we've been as humans, as mankind, that's the most, that's the most awesome thing about who we are, is that we actually love seeing people excel. We love seeing people triumph. We love to actually lend a hand to those who might be down or help people reach the goals they say they want. That's the most beautiful thing about being a human is that, hey, we can do that and we have the power to do that. And I call it the triple P. So again, if you're gonna be persistent, you must have passion, all right? And persistency requires you to have some sort of purpose or you just hit it in a direction full tilt <laughs> with, with nothing to actually aim toward. Now, let's talk about this purpose thing. The number one undeniable truth and purpose of an impactful and authentic leader is this, is to lead someone greater than yourself. I'll say this again, this is it. I don't care what you do, what company you start, what family you begin, what career you're after, you need to know that this is the basis of what real leader, leaders really think about and what they're here to do. This is the purpose. Because we can literally become the best Girl Scout team ever. We can really become the best Hello Kitty salesman in America. We can even become the most talented basketball team in the country. We can become the better, the, 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 the most exciting institution in the land. But in the end, who did you become along, who did you become along the way? So it doesn't matter what you're doing, as long as it doesn't bother or hurt anybody else, in the end, it's to lead someone greater than yourself. This is real, authentic leadership. So ask yourself this one question. What other purpose is better than leaving someone who is greater than yourself? Is there, is there anything anybody can think about that's better than that? Let me know. Maybe there's beer place down here in Willamette, but I mean, but this is where it's at. 
No, no amount of million, no amount of money, no amount of, of accolades is going to be able to top this. Because believe me, if you're doing this, the money, the accolades, the notoriety, the fulfillment is right behind it. This is where it's at. It's to lead someone greater than yourself. An authentic leader, this is their true purpose. Thank you guys for listening. So now I want to leave it open for Q and A's. Again, obviously a lot of people want to hear about my career as far as NFL, what I'm doing with these two technology companies. Uh, and also, if you have any questions about the things I actually mentioned today, please open up, guys. It's a, it's a smaller group, but hey, open up, ask your questions, think about it for a couple of seconds, and then we can start asking questions. So go ahead, fire away the moment you get them. So did you read my website or something? No. You didn't? <laughs> all right, so, oh, okay. So, all right, so when I travel the country and speak, guys, I just wrote a book, and the book is about how to raise a happy and self-confident child with bulletproof self-esteem. And one of the main things that I had to understand uh, to answer your question is that when I grew up, I lived in a trailer house with no food, no light, no lights, no electricity, and this just wasn't one or two weekends. This is, it was common for us. And when I was going through all these things, my mother literally still spoke power into me. And what I mean by that is she, she didn't allow circumstances to be the thing that I focused on. And so even though we had a lot of cold nights, eating press ham sandwiches when, when uh, you know, she could finally get some, you know, get, get, get a little enough money to actually pay for some, some food and bring it home. She always spoke power into me. And the, what I mean by that is that the words she used, the choice of words, created a strong self-talk. And that strong self-talk literally is what carried me throughout the, r the roughest time of my life, as well as even to this day. And so that's why I wrote a book on it. And it's called Affirmation to Transformation. What you say to yourself consistently is what you will manifest, period. Oh, I'm not gonna do so good on this test. Well, guess what? So be it. Your mind will bring forward exactly what you tell it. So, how did I get through it? And I share detail. My, my very, I was molested by my very own stepfather at the age of five and he took my sense of worthiness self-confidence and self-esteem at that ripe age of five and I had no idea that those scars were still on me when I got all the way up into becoming one of the, the best athletes that, that ever come through the university I went to uh, developing a startup company raising over half a million dollars uh, and then also the second technology company to write in a book, I kid you not, I didn't like scrape through those things that actually were causing me a little bit of riff. And so to answer your question directly is that my, my self-talk, the, the affirmation that I use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, has created a strong self-talk in me that I don't care what you bring my way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's to me, I will always be able to actually face it and overcome it. Hopefully that answers your question. I get long winded. My parents are pastors, so yeah. I'm the prodigal son though. So uh other questions. Come on guys, bring some bring some out. Or oh, I'm gonna point to you. And you're gonna have to just come up with one on the spot. Tiffany, go ahead. <laughs> uh, what were you involved in in college? All right, so I was uh, obviously came to school for, for football as well as ran track. Um, 
I just recently got inducted to the Hall of Fame there uh, two years ago. Um, so it was football, track, but I've always been that guy who uh, uh, was a journeyer. Like I've always been the person who I would say I had to lie to kick it. In other words, when my buddies wanted to go hang out, I kind of wanted to research and see something that I could actually create. I was always an entrepreneur. Uh, and um, that young man I told you about who sold the puppets for $10 versus $5, that was actually me. <laughs> Again, I felt like, hey, they were puppies who were brand new, born in a box. They was literally brand new. Their mama had just licked them dry, and they had their eyes closed. And so when he got back, one, one of them had opened their eyes, and so to me that was a little bit more value. So I charged him $10 because <laughs> the eyes are open now. Uh, but yeah, so those are the things I was um, uh, involved in, which, to uh, be honest with you, uh, a guy like me that was coming from where I came from, that was my only way out. Uh, I couldn't have, my mother couldn't have paid for college. Uh, so I had to use my physical ability to get to where I was today. And, and the truth is, I had several Division I offers but I wanted to be the first person in my family to graduate college. I was the fourth fastest hurdler in the country. Uh, how many of you guys ever run hurdles? You, oh, you're a hurdler? I see why you're asking me questions. Anybody else hurdler? Anybody else run track? What, 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 what event you run? I did the 100, 200, javelin, discus, not even discus, um, like a shot put and I was also. So you like a decathlete? Yeah, <laughs> yeah or that. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, track and those things got me to where I'm at today. I was one of the highly most sought after athletes uh, coming out of high school. But with that, again, like I said, if it wasn't for those things and me having a sense enough to say, hey, look, if I go to Division One school, I know that I'll come out and play professional ball, right, by my junior year. But my focus, for whatever reason, at that time in my life, I decided to be the first person in my family to graduate college. But here's the thing, it talks about leaders. Leaders actually have a vision. Since then, it's been 17 of my relatives, even my older sister and brother who's went to school now and graduated. So I set the precedent like I felt like what I wanted to do, right? And my mom always told me, said, son, if you're good enough, they'll find you. I'm talking about the NFL. And it was true enough that they did. Any other questions? Do you have any advice for athletes who are very talented but Oh, good God about it. We need to actually have dinner seven days a week. <laughs> Here's what's interesting. The thing about great, talented people is that you run into this, this thing to where they've been able to do that all their life. If I'm faster than the majority, the majority of people, then I, when, I'm, when I get to the meet, I, all I got to do is just do enough to beat you. And everybody, <laughs> you're so amazing. Now take that person to a grand stage to where the athlete's got the same ability but has the mindset and they get their tail busted. So how do you do it? How do you put them, how do you actually get that person to say, hey look, here's the thing. You're wasting your skills. You're wasting your abilities. You're actually debiting your future. Like, it's a debt. So how do you do it? I think the biggest thing is is you gotta continually try to find what they love. And if you can connect that purpose and what they love with and associate it with getting the job done, then you're gonna get more out of them. So here's the thing. Some people are better with teams versus individually by themselves. So I got a buddy who literally, right now, he's pop belly and every single thing. All he do is drink beer and eat steak. But I can guarantee he's one of the fastest guys I've ever met in my whole entire life. And if he just warmed up for two weeks straight, he probably can beat majority of college athletes. But he was the guy who had all the talent in the world, but didn't have to give, didn't have to give much of an effort. So a quick story is I started an elite track club in Lincoln, Nebraska. In three short years, uh, we went from 21 kids to, to, to 51 kids the second year, and then this last year we had 75 plus, which I had to cut some. And in three short years, we now have a gold medal at the Junior Olympics across the state, a gold medal, 
two silvers, a bronze, and eight All-American titles. How do I do it with the whole entire group? It goes back to putting a vision and a purpose in front of them. And I call it neuro, it's, it, I don't call it, but it's, it's real thing, it goes back to affirmation. It's neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro, meaning how the mind works, linguistic, the language I use, programming is the behavior, right? And if I showed you, if I had it up here on the screen, you would see these kids from eight to 18, they bust and tail, not just in meets, they bust and tail in practice. And what we actually have is a true vision, a true purpose. And I make sure that they all understand that. So it's a culture, right? Uh, and, and it goes to speak to your athlete. If that athlete, he can be the best athlete in the world. If he's not plugged into a culture, he'll continue to do and be the same that they've always been through their whole entire life. That's how you change it for them, but they gotta be connected to a purpose. So how I've actually been able to do it is called, we, 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 we have a saying called stay true to form. And stay true to form is not just physical, right? If you see these kids, eight years old, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, they look like real Olympic sprinters. The way that their bodies are, you know what I'm saying, flying down the track. But Every single time I make sure that I continue to drive home the idea is that as a team, we stay true to form, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. Because this is not just about the physical aspect. What you're learning today as an athlete has way more to do with your mindset versus what you do physically in your accolades. So I continue to praise the effort, right? The effort with that athlete who's Given half of an effort, you, you're going to have an opportunity to continue to bark, <laughs> right? And it's nearly not barking, but it's consistency in what you say to them about the purpose in which you want to drive them toward. So find that purpose. And again, it might just be finding out, because are you a college coach? It might be something at home. He might be missing mom, might be missing dad, might never had dad. Uh, he might feel insecure. He might feel, or she might feel, who, again, I don't know if it's a girl or boy, but they may feel like they're out of place. And I don't know if they're far away from home, and if they are, that's, a, that's something to consider. And so find those different things, and again, you can definitely talk to me afterwards, because I coached college football for seven years. And believe me, all these different personalities from all over the country in one place, if you don't, if you don't keep a good tabs on them, you can lose them. Uh, uh, not just from an athlete standpoint, but from a mentality standpoint. So I'm, I'm, I'm up for talking to you about that, definitely. Other questions? So how many of you in here feel like that one day you're going to accept a leadership role or getting ready to, right? The majority of you, what, what is it that you feel like you're going to be going toward? Pre-law, uh, you have aspirations to, to, to have your own practice? Yeah, I'm interested in going to St. Paul too. Yeah, oh Lord have mercy. That almost knocked me off this day. What about you, my man? I want to be an athletic director. Oh, AD, woo! That ain't even the athlete, it's mom and daddy. <laughs> That's the problem. It's never the athlete, it's mom and daddy, just so you know that. Who, who else over here? Did you raise your, what's your, what is it? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to just have my own business. A like goal of mine is to hire somebody you, you, rather than be hired by somebody. Oh, oh yeah. So you want to you want to chart your own course? Yeah, no doubt. Do you, you say you know what that is you want, or you just you just you just feel like you have aspirations to run your own company? Uh, multiple ideas. Yeah, so. yeah. So you 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 most likely a serial entrepreneur. It'll 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 hit you. It'll hit you. Anybody else? What about you, my man? Uh, I'm just pursuing a career in business. Good. Uh, no doubt. Lady in the green sweater back there. You're the only one with that green sweater on. Um, Who paying for your school? Because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Nurse? Yeah, well, you're a caregiver. See, see, here's the thing. I, I ask these questions for a reason. You got business, you got law practice, you got AD, athletic and sports, 
coach talking about an athlete that don't want to give the best effort, uh, and then she says nurse. See, it doesn't matter what you want to do as long as you love doing it and you have a purpose in doing it. Believe me, I'm, I, look, we blessed to have a caregiver like yourself. Otherwise, maybe a whole, be a whole bunch of babies being dropped out on the floor or not taken care of. Nigga, that might be a little vulgar, but hey, the truth is, is this, is that people like yourself are caregivers for a reason. If you love it, do it and do it passionately. That's the only way that, again, it's effort, right? People need to see that you're committed. If you're committed to it, people will follow you all day, every day. So those four characteristics are real, the real deal. So. Anybody else? Two ladies in the back back there. Y'all been giggling and talking with each other. What y'all what y'all talking about? What y'all thinking? Austin? Yes, ma'am. Definitely, you know, leaders at, at one point in time were followers. In order to be a great leader, you must have had to be a follower. You ha it's, it's, it's a part of the, the loop. In order to lead, you must follow. So if I'm a follower of a great leader, I'm most likely going to replicate the things that the great leader has, has, has done or has set an example for. But if I'm with a terrible leader, I'm most likely going to replicate <laughs> the bad things that that leader has given me an example of. So you have to have been a follower first before you become a leader. And the way that I look at that is you, 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 that's what makes the purpose so important, is that you need to leave someone greater than yourself. Leave this place better than what you found it. Because you might not ever run a big company. You might be the, the, the most amazing stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad. You might be the best, you know what I'm saying, corner gas station man ever, but whatever you do, do it with so much passion and love that people know you're committed to it. That's it. I started these two technology companies because that's just what I love doing. Like I love creating. I lived in a trailer house, no food, no light, no electricity. I had to get creative. I mean, I got so creative at times, man, I, I created a salt water Aquarium after watching a Saturday morning cartoon. And what I mean by a saltwater aquarium is <laughs> I went down to the local pond and we and, and went and found a, a catfish, pulled a catfish out of there, and I hauled it back home in a five gallon bucket. And I dug a huge hole in my mama's backyard, <laughs> filled it up with water, ran in the house, and, and grabbed that Morton salt. Pour all the Morton salt in there and put the catfish in there, and I had me a saltwater fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of creativity I had as a kid. Now here's the deal, my mama was not very happy about that big old, that big old hole I dug in her backyard. But the story she tells today, which is in the book, in the forward, she says that was the beginning of his creativity. He's always been that way. And I didn't want to take that away from him. And so um, even to this day when I go home, you can still see a little bit of remnants of that, that hole in that backyard, that big deep old hole in her backyard. But that was her saying, look, yeah, I was frustrated, teed off about, about you digging a big hole in my backyard, but the lesson I learned from her that day, and I can remember it as if it was like it was yesterday, she said, remember that you have the responsibility of making sure that you don't um, create problems for everybody else, which you just dug a big hole in my backyard, close to this pipe that I could have busted. You have the responsibility not to cause problems for everybody else. That's you, that's your efforts. And so uh, maybe that's a long answer for being a follower to, you know, first following. It goes back to the dynamic team leadership. You can be a leader but not be the vocal one. You can be a leader just through action. You can be the, a leader by the way you give. Everybody has the ability to lead. You're not just born, a, you know, the truth is, you're born with all the skills, or not skills, all the, all the attributes and all the faculties to do it, to be a great leader. It takes practice, like anything. Like this great photographer right here, the great videographer. 
It takes skill. It takes the development of it over and over and over and over again. And that's why it requires grace. Uh, all right, any other questions? All right, I guess you guys can, uh, if you have any questions, I Coach, I would love to talk to you. Uh, if you guys don't have any other questions for me, thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> right.